You got the money you want to spend it, spend it. If not, you're not missing anything. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today, we have a full face of pretty much everything high-end. There's only one or two drugstore products, but I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I've been hauling that I haven't used yet. The star of today's show is this Patrick Ta. What's it called again? I keep getting this wrong. Major Dimension. I keep wanting to say Major Sculpt. Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. I used it to create this look today and I don't know. First impressions, comment and tell me what you guys think about it. I have a lot of high-end products here that I have not used yet that you guys saw in my hauls. So you're going to see how they apply. You're going to see my first thoughts, the initial impressions, and I'm going to let you know at the end if I think you should buy it or not. Before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you know when I upload a video. I upload videos twice a week. I try. I really do. Um, but it's mostly beauty content. Every now and then I throw in a little fitness. But yeah, we're here for hauls, tutorials, reviews. This is it. So if you want to see how I got this look, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Alright guys, we're going to jump straight into the video because these tend to be kind of long. Most of the products that I have are high-end products. This is stuff from the Sephora haul, stuff that I've just been picking up, and I haven't shown them to you guys yet. I told you guys I was going to start doing more first impression videos so you can get an idea of what I think after I bought all this stuff because not all of it's always good. So I want to be transparent with you guys about that. One thing that I have that is not high-end that I am going to be using is this L'Oreal Micro Ink Pen by Brow Stylus. I have been using this off camera and I like it, which is why I want to include it in this video. So you guys will see that. I will just do one brow, not doing both. And then another product that I have is this Honest Beauty Honestly Bright Eyes Tinted Eye Cream. I feel like this kind of reminds me of the Fenty Bright Eyes or whatever it's called. It's not full coverage, but it does help cancel out some of my under eye circles. You'll see that too. One of the things that I am most excited about to use in this video is this Patrick Ta Eyeshadow Palette. This is, what is it called? The Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette. This came out and I was not really checking for it. Like I was just like, oh, okay, another warm palette. And then I started watching reviews of it and I saw the packaging. This reminds me of the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 Limited Edition Rose Gold packaging. So I was like, okay, she's cute. I was intrigued by this palette because of the fact that it has the two creams on the end. So this is what the palette looks like. This flap is already opening. Um, but this covers the creams so that your powders don't get into it. But yeah, it's a warm palette. The colors are beautiful. It's not warm like orangey, red, bronzy. It's more like a neutral warm. So it's a little different, tiny little different, but I think it'll be cute. And I've heard mixed reviews, so I wanted to see for myself. I was debating on whether or not I was going to use an eyeshadow base for this because with them having the creams, I don't know if I should or not, but you know what? I'm not. We are going to see what this does by itself. We're going to start off with the lightest cream shade. So this is what the shade looks like right there. It is a bit of a cool tone. Okay. So this is pretty much almost, it's a little different undertone from my skin, but this is pretty much just canceling out the discoloration on my eyes. So I'm not mad about that. That's a good pick. So now to set this, I'm going to grab that brush that I tried to use the cream with, and I'm just going to go over it lightly. These shades don't have, oh, they do have names. Okay. So I'm going to go over it with the shade Scandal, which is this light shade here. Not a lot of kick up in the pan when I dip my brush in it. I want you guys to see that. So that's a good, I don't ever really care about that, but some people do. I'm gonna do something I don't normally do and we're gonna do a halo eye. So I'm gonna take 
a flat shader brush and I'm going to go into the darkest cream shade and we're going to see how dark we can get that. I'm going to start on the outer V. So I just have this flat shader brush here and I'm going to start. Yeah, so that's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. It's not bad, but y'all let me know if y'all have seen some of the other YouTubers who are darker complexions doing this video, doing a review on this. Cause I need to look for that. That might be something to take into consideration. Now I'm going to take a smaller, just a pointy brush and I'm going to try to pack the darkest shade on to see if I need to, if it'll set it and it'll help build up the color or not. I'm gonna dip into the shade Transition, this darkest brown here. So that helped darken it up some. But I wonder how this shade, let me swatch it real quick. Oh, that is a very rich brown shade. So pigmentation is definitely there. I was wondering if this shade wasn't going to show up a lot, but yeah, she is pretty dark. So would definitely be good to use on its own, but we're going to put it on the outside and inner corner of the eye on top of the cream. I don't know if you guys have bought this already or not bought it or thinking about it, but this palette was expensive. It was $68. You're only getting 12 shades. Hell, with Natasha Denona's palettes that are 65 or 68, whatever they are, at least you're getting, what is it, 15 shades, I think? 18 shades, something like that. So now we're going to blend around the edges. So I'm going to take just a bigger fluffy brush and we are going to take absolutely. Yeah, I think that's absolutely, which is this shade down here. And I'm going to start lightly around the edges with that. Ooh, that is dark. <laughs> that is darker than I thought it was. Okay. But I'm going to go in with the shade Mother, which is the lighter shade here, and then go around that edge, which is pretty much on top. This is just turned into the biggest blown out smoky eye ever, because honestly, these colors are coming off a lot more pigmented than I thought they would. So now that we have that all the way to our brow bone, I'm going to highlight <laughs> my brow bone after I do my brows. but. Right now, I want to go into the shimmer shades. I'll show you guys swatches and we'll figure out what I'm going to put on my eye. This shade is called Lady. Then the second is called Exquisite. Then Legendary. Then Lavish. Here. Then Opulence. Lady and Exquisite are like toppers, which are these two here. Lady and Exquisite. This shade is different. The shade in the middle, Legendary, it's like a matte with sparkles in it, but it feels really smooth. And then the other two are more just your standard foiled eyeshadows. Very pretty, I really like that one. Since we did that and I said I really like it, we are gonna go in with Lavish, which almost looks pinkish. I'm gonna start off trying it with a brush and see how that goes. These feel like the shimmer shades, like the um, glittery chunky shades from Melt Cosmetics. I'm gonna use my finger. And as you can see, that is very foiled, very pretty. Definitely see the payoff there. I like how it kind of has like a pinky hue to it, but it's still like a neutral kind of bronze warm shade. Very interesting color. I will say that. 
I'm gonna take the other darker shade, which is called Opulence on a flat shader brush. And I'm gonna see if I can pick it up with that and just put that, yeah, this one picks up and just kind of blend these two together. Ooh, that's a lot of payoff. I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you feel like this is anything like, I don't know, I don't, I mean, it's pretty, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I feel like it's worth the price, I guess is my initial impression right now. I'm gonna go in with this one here and just put that right in the center. So let's see, this is what it looks like right now. Let's see if that makes a difference. Oh yeah. That is pretty. I feel like I kind of lost some of my halo a little bit, but the shine on there, just gonna go back and put a little bit of that darkest matte shade back in the corners. I only see a little bit of fallout, not much at all. I don't know if you guys can see, I have a little bit of glitter right here. I'm just gonna try to tap off. To moisturize my face today, I didn't use anything new, but I haven't used this in a while. I use my Juno & Co Moonshine Miracle Cream. I remember I did use this in a video and I loved how my makeup turned out that day. So I haven't used it in a while. I put that on before I did my eyes. For primer, we're going to use this Gucci Serum, the Silk Priming Serum. Y'all saw this recently in a haul. I still have not used it. So this will be the first time. Love the packaging. It's absolutely beautiful. Gold pump little bit out and see how this feels i wonder if it's gonna feel like the pat mcgrath i have glitter on my fingers that i don't want on my face it does have a bit of a smell to it feels very hydrating i don't feel like it feels as smoothing as the Pat McGrath or my Becca primer, the Brightening Blur, but it feels, it does make my skin feel like it's soft. I don't know, like it feels like a moisturizer that just feels really, really smooth, but it does have a bit of a scent to it. So I don't mind it though, kind of florally, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna color correct today with the foundation i am going to put a little bit of my charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter on i actually love this and it does have a bit of a color i don't know if it has coverage to it or what it's weird i put this all over my face as you can see it has a little bit of a sheen to it it gives my face a glow for sure but at the same time, I feel like it kind of helps color correct. So that's part of the reason I wanted to use it. But I do kind of feel like it also helps. Like it looks like a filter on my face. I mean, I still have my pores and everything, but it just doesn't feel like it's as noticeable. But I love the glow that it gives. I'm going to use the Gucci Natural Finish Fluid Foundation. I picked up the shade 380N. And this is in their medium range. I do think this is a little dark on me, if I remember correctly. I haven't worn it in a while. Ooh, yeah, she's gonna be a little dark. Just a little bit, but y'all know I like my foundation dark. So this is about two pumps. And we're gonna see if we can get as much coverage as possible with that. So I'm gonna start stippling in the areas I need it most. But just right off the bat, like I think this is so pretty. I feel like for this to say it's neutral though, this still looks very golden to me. Oh, I put so much on my nose. Like, do y'all see that? I don't know. 
And this actually kind of smells like the primer. I think this coverage looks really good, actually. I was thinking about putting another one, but I don't think I need it. So we're just gonna stay with this for right now and then go ahead and go in with concealer. The concealer I picked up was also from my Sephora haul. This is the Cafe Marc Jacobs Extra Shot Caffeine Concealer and Foundation. I got the shade 310 Tan. And she is pretty light, so that'll help. But this is what the packaging looks like. Another gorgeous packaging. I was gonna try to get this in my foundation shade, but I was shopping online and I couldn't find, I couldn't figure it out. So I just went with the shade I would use for concealer because I figured that would be a safe bet. And for the amount of product, I did get it when it was 30% off. Um, for the amount of product, I felt like it would be better to have this as a bunch of concealer versus a little bit of foundation. So I'm going to start with my brush like I normally do and blend out around the edges. Ooh, I feel like the shade looks a little more yellow than I thought it would. We know I do not like yellow. I'm not sure how I feel about this undertone, but I like the coverage of it. And this spread out a lot more than I thought it would, so we got a little bit too much. But hey, isn't all my first impressions like this? I'm gonna go back with my foundation brush and just go around. I think this is a Mm, I don't think it's full coverage because so I feel like I still see a little bit of my darkness peeking through under my eyes. I'm going to add just a tiny little bit more right in the corners to see if we can get that covered. I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to set the rest of my face while I'm letting that sit. I'm going to use this Kosas Cloud Set Baked Setting and Smoothing Powder. Haven't used this yet either. This is in the shade Softly, which they say is a sheer tan. And this is what the packaging looks like. Super cute. And then this is the powder. This reminds me of the MAC powder. This reminds me of the Sephora Micro, what is it, Micro Smooth Baked Powder. So. I initially said I wasn't going to get this because I had the Sephora powder and then I wanted to try it anyway. So I'm just going to set the perimeter of my face using this. This does not give you any coverage at all. This is basically just you want to set some product and not have any additional coverage added. It's pretty. I mean, you don't see that it did much. It's not taking away any of the radiance that I have going on, but it's also not changing the color. And then to set under my eyes, okay, y'all. I feel like I'm gonna regret this, but I have to do it because I promised I was gonna show you. This is the Tatcha powder, the Radiant Translucent Setting Powder. This is not translucent. That is a lie. I don't know why they told it. I don't know why they thought we wouldn't figure it out. This is what it looks like on my finger. That's white. And when you blend it out on the skin, you see that clearly. So the way I've been using it, <sighs> The way I've been using it is I take a little bit of the powder, I put it in the top, swirl my brush, and then I literally just, that is it. Because you cannot use a lot of this. I don't even know. I haven't taken pictures with it, so I don't know if there's flashback, but you can't bake with this. And I feel like when I've used this throughout the day, when I've looked at myself afterwards, I felt like I looked dry, kind of aged, I don't know. Um, so we're just gonna 
try to see how that looks. I don't feel like it's doing anything. Like I don't feel like it's super blurring. I don't feel like it's making me feel like, oh, this powder is absolutely amazing. Like there's, I don't know. I'm still watching other people's videos trying to figure out if somebody has figured out a magic trick for this because I have not. That's enough of that powder. If I need to use some more powder, I also have my Sephora translucent powder, which honestly, I think I'm gonna use that on top of this because I'm trying to get in close enough so you guys can see. I just feel like this is not doing enough to set my under eyes and I feel like they're gonna crease. So I'm gonna take my Sephora translucent setting powder and I picked this up because I heard Andrea Renee talking about how good it was press this into the skin. Now see, I feel like that definitely did some blurring. And then I'm just gonna go back over that with my Kosas powder, just to help blend. Because we are already highlighted enough, we don't need to bake too much, so. This is what the complexion is looking like right now. I think it looks good. I mean, I'm not just like, oh wow, look how my face turned out. I think this is absolutely like the best stuff I've ever used. I ain't feeling that yet, but not complaining either. For contour and bronzing, Patrick Ta is back in the building. I picked up the She's Chiseled Deep uh, Cream Contour and Bronzer Duo. I watched reviews on this before I picked this one up and I do think that the medium shade would have been too light for me, but I also think this is too dark for me. So I'm gonna have to go in with a very light hand because I swatched this and I'll show you guys again, like that is pretty dark. Do we see anything yet or am I tripping? Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna use my brush. That's what I always do. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I can see it. You can definitely see it has a grayer tone to it. Like it is actually a contour and not a bronzer. But doing it this way, definitely see a contour, but it's nothing crazy, so. All right, and then we're gonna go over it with my bronzer brush with the bronzer. Oh yeah, see those two together, that comes out dark. So I'm initially just setting this and then I'll go over my whole area that I normally bronze. Okay, this is not as nearly as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. For blush, I started to use one of my cream blushes, but then I opened my drawer and I saw this Charlotte Tilbury blush and I just knew. This is the Walk of No Shame Swish and Pop Blusher. This is the Cheek to Chic. This is what she looks like. So there's actually a highlighter here in the middle and you just swirl it all around. So we are gonna do that. Oh yeah, you see the glow already. I'm gonna try to hmm, stick to the outside to get some color. There we go. But that is pretty. I may see if I can get my brush just in the highlighter. I'll be honest, I thought this shade was gonna be a lot darker than what it is because I think this is the deepest one she has. But it's still a very pretty natural color. It's not too berry. I'm gonna take my highlighter brush and see what we can make this highlighter look like. I'm gonna go just in the middle
Y'all know that's not enough highlighter for me, right? <laughs> not at all. Okay, no. She needs to go home and stay with the blush and do what she did with the blush. All right, I went ahead and grabbed another highlighter because y'all know that's not enough. This is not it. So this is the Marc Jacobs Omega Glaze All Over Foil Luminizer. Still in the box. You saw this in my Marshalls haul. Apparently everybody was going gaga over this cherry stuff. I don't know why, not for me. This is what it looks like. Absolutely beautiful. And then I'll go ahead, oh, I will swatch it for you. That is it right there. So yes, this needs to go on my face. Yeah, that's a highlighter. We don't want to go too crazy, do we? Not really. Not too much. Think it looks good, but I think this matches very well with the eyes. Everything is blended. Not mad about it. We're going to finish up the bottom lash line. I'm going to take the cream and I'm going to take this little pointy brush that I have here and I'm going to attempt, if it picks up, to put this on my bottom, yes, picking up on my bottom lash line. Just to help kind of smoke that out some. A lot gets on the brush, but I don't feel like it picked up a lot to put on my eyes. It's not bad, but mm, it's all right. I'm going to take the shade, I keep forgetting these names, absolutely, and we're just going to put that on the bottom lash line as well. See, I feel like my under eyes are creasing already. Maybe I need to wipe away some of the powder, but I don't know if you can see like right in here. And then for eyeliner, I have this Tardiest Double Take Eyeliner. This is a black liner by Tarte, and one side of it is a regular, I think. Yeah, this is the one. So one side is a pencil liner, and then the other side is a liquid liner with... Is that a brush tip? Please tell me that's a brush tip. It looks felt. Hold on. It's felt. I can make it work. We're going to do a wing. Well, this actually isn't bad. All right, so that is what we have for the first wing. I just don't like felt tips because I feel like they're a little stiff. I like how the brushes give a little more. This is sharp. Ooh wee. Keep sticking myself. This is very sharp. Look at that. All right, so that's what we have. Liner is done on this side. I'm gonna do the other side off camera so it doesn't take as long. And then I'll be back to show you guys my brows. I forgot I do have a mascara I want to show you guys. This is a small size. I do have the bigger one coming in because I've heard such great reviews about it. But this is the Lancome Idol Lash Lifting Volumizing Mascara. Now I do know that sometimes they say the travel size mascaras are different in formula than the full size. I hope that's not the case. This does have the little bristle applicator which I don't mind. I feel like these do really well with helping it to lengthen. I will say I don't feel like I'm as wild with this one as I was with the Pat McGrath Dark Star, but it's not bad. I mean, it's definitely doing something for my lashes. I hate when I put on a mascara and feel like it doesn't look like anything. It seems like it's building up nicely. I don't know if you guys can see what this looks like, but with the amount of eyeshadow I have on and this big wing, you might not be able to see it. 
All right, so I am gonna put lashes on, but off the bat, yeah, I like this. I think this is a good mascara. I'm not as like, wow, as I was with Pat McGrath. That totally took me by surprise. But this, I feel like it's about what I hoped for, which is good, it's good. All right, so now we're gonna move into brows. I just wanted to show you guys this real quick because I have been wearing my brows a little bushier and so I just wanted to show you guys how this works. This is one of those pencils that comes with the little prongs at the end. I don't know if you guys can see that there, but so it's supposed to help make the little hair like strokes better. What I've been doing is I just go in the front and I just start drawing upwards. And I basically just use this to fill in where I want more hairs. So you can see the difference that makes already. I think this works really well for days where I don't wanna have a super, super sculpted brow, but I still don't want my brows to look sparse. And I really just use it in the front like this. And then I go on the tail with a pencil, usually my Benefit Precisely My Brow or my Anastasia Brow Wiz, and that is it. This makes it so easy. So this is just basically to fill in, and then you go in and you outline and define where you want, but just look at the difference that's made with making my brows look fuller. So now I'm gonna go finish my brows and we'll come back and finish my face. All right, so brows are done. So as you can see, like you see how they're just a little more fluffy, like the bottom of them is sculpted, but the top is a little, not messy, but just not as sculpted as I normally do it. That's the only word I could think of. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna highlight my brow bone, which I don't normally do but because my shadow went all the way up to my eyebrows, we need to try something different. So I'm gonna take this top shade here, what's well, actually the bottom, since I have this flipped upside down, this bottom shade here, and we're just gonna lightly go underneath the brows to give them a little more separation from the eyes. Do you see the difference that made? Just helps it look a little more arched and defined. I haven't done that in a long time. I like how that looks. So now we're gonna move into lips. Lips, I'm gonna use this Becca Ultimate Definer Lip Pencil in the shade Energetic. And we're just gonna line our lips with that. I remember thinking this was gonna be a little more brown and it ain't. But I still think it is warm enough to go with the eyes. And then we're gonna finish off with this Smashbox Always On Liquid Lipstick in Yes Honey. And this is just basically a nice nude. That's a little pinkier than what I expected. Let me go back around and just try to darken it up a little bit. And that is it for the look. I'm gonna throw on some lashes. I have a new pair, they're drugstore, but I haven't worn them yet. These, the, these are the Ardell Double 113s. I've never worn these before and they look kind of fun. So we're gonna try those. I'm gonna put those on and then that's gonna be the end of the video. So I'll come back and tell you guys my final thoughts. Guys, I had to make a game time decision and we had to change those lashes. These things are so long. Like, okay, this is what I have on. This is the, <coughs> excuse me, this is the Kiss Shy Lashes. So you see those there? 
Look at the difference. No way. It covered up the whole eyeshadow look and I just couldn't do it. So we went with the shorter lashes. These are in the style Shy. I think they're cute. They give me a little definition, but it's not nothing too crazy and it's not gonna hide my eyeshadow. To finish this off, because I did forget I had this, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I have never used this. I have nowhere to go today, so we are spraying my face to sit in the house, but it's fine because you guys need to know my thoughts. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I don't know what this mister is like. It doesn't smell too strong. I like this mister. We can work with that. I do smell a little bit of a fragrance, but it's not bad. I do think that once we got everything together, I think everything matches well. We're good with the shade. And I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of everything that I used, tell you guys my final thoughts, what I thought was good, what was okay, what I wish I wouldn't have bought. So we'll start off with the complexion, primer and foundation. I need to wear it to know for sure. I liked how the primer felt. Is it gonna make my makeup last? I do see my wrinkles coming through already a little bit, which is normally not that great of a sign, but we put a lot of stuff on my face, so who knows what it can be. I have worn that foundation before. I do like it. Definitely. Was it worth the money? I don't know, but I'm definitely keeping it. The concealer, I'm going to try it again with a powder that I normally use, like my Laura Mercier or my Nakia Joy Cosmetics setting powder and see I did put two layers of it and I normally don't have to do that but I do think the coverage is pretty good if you can see here you do still see I'm glad I was looking at my screen because I just ran out of memory anyway as I was saying you can see a little bit of my dark spots peeking through here so I don't feel like it's like super full coverage but I think it's good coverage so this will probably be more of like my every day despite how bright it is y'all already know this is what i do because most of the time my foundation is too dark but coverage is okay it's not 100 percent full the patrick ta bronzer and sculptor honestly i don't know because i thought this was going to be darker maybe i need to use a different brush but the bronzer is nice, don't get me wrong. Like it's a nice product, but just from the way it's swatched based on what I saw there compared to what I got on my face, like I don't feel, I don't know. I guess I expected more. It's not bad, but it's not what I expected. So I'm gonna keep playing with this, not bringing it back. I like it, but it's just not what I expected. The Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, I love this. I've used it before. I am going to do another video because I have two other products that I think are dupes for this and I wanted to show you guys because they are drugstore. So I'm going to show you that because if you're thinking about getting this but don't want to pay the price, I have another option for you. This Tatcha powder, I'm still not sold on it. I'm going to keep watching some videos and see if I can figure out I mean, I don't think my under eyes look bad. Like just looking in the mirror, I don't think, I don't know. I don't know because I know for a fact you can't bake with it. Had I done that, I would have sent this back immediately. But knowing the learning curve of it, it's okay. I just feel like I don't think, it's not worth $48. I'm going to say that right now. And if you haven't bought it, don't. I don't think it's worth it. My Charlotte Tilbury blush. Like I said, I expected it to be darker, but I love the glow, I love the color, and I just had to build it up some. I like it, definitely glad I finally got it. Would I buy it again? Probably not. My Kosas powder, it's a powder. Is it anything revolutionary? No, no coverage, just to help set everything. If you have the Sephora powder or the Mineralized Skin Finish from MAC, you have this you don't need it but i like the mascara I'm gonna keep using that to see how it works when i don't have such a glam eyeshadow look but i could tell a difference with my lashes so definitely gonna keep using that 
I've used the Smashbox liquid lipsticks before. I like them. I do feel like my lips are very dry and I'm probably going to put a gloss on top of it. But these do last long. They dry out really quick. So if you open one, you need to use it. The highlighter, we know I loved it. I don't know what else I'm forgetting on this table, but last of all, this eyeshadow palette. I love how my eye look turned out. I will say that. Do I feel like I need this? No. It's beautiful, but I feel like I could probably get this same look using other eyeshadow palettes that I already have. Yes, it's different that it has the cream options in it, but in terms of what the shadows do, they're good shadows. I'm not bringing it back. I'm keeping it. I'm going to use it. I think my look turned out gorgeous, but if this was limited edition, would I get a backup? No. So I don't know. Like I'm going to use it when it runs out. It'll be like, oh yeah, I had that. When have I ever run out of an eyeshadow palette? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to keep it. It's nice. Is it worth the price? I don't think it's worth $68. No. If you're just an average person who is looking for an eyeshadow palette and you want to buy a high-end palette, I would say get Natasha Denona. If you're going to pay this price, you get more shadows. You got the money you want to spend it, spend it. If not, you're not missing anything. All right, guys. So that is it for this video. I know it's long. I feel like I was talking forever. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new and you enjoy the content, join the family. Hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.